Today is uh, January the 22nd and uh, you know I was uh, I had plans today you know to check a few rabbit snares and set a few more. Got some weather coming in uh, Wednesday and Thursday so I'm just going to shrink these up for now and uh, when this uh, storm is over and settles down I'm going to run a few more uh, rabbit snares. Uh, right now you know I was just had a few to get, you know scatter one to keep the pot going but uh, after the next storm I'm going to run quite a few snares and uh, Get a few to put in the freezer, you know. So, so anyway, I'm running in this one right here, and what I'm gonna do is uh, just stick them up here like that, right? And it'll be a lot easier to find that way, you know, after uh, after the next batch of snow. Uh, you can see there's a fresh rabbit track over right there, and looks like I got a rabbit right here, and I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take this snare off here. Take the one there like that. No, that froze real hard either. So first rabbit tracks right there. And anyway, I'm just gonna put that stick here, leave it here like that, and I'll use the same one uh, when I come back to reset. And next time back, I'm gonna put the birch to them all and bait them up, cause uh, you know, like I said before, like uh, I was just getting scattered one for the pot here now, but when I come when I start uh, snaring again, I'm gonna get a few for the freezer, so uh, I'm gonna go at it kind of hard. <laughs> well, nothing in this one, and push off the camera there. <laughs> uh, I said I'll just put it up there like that. Then uh, after uh, after the snow settles a bit, I'll come back and reset. And uh, you know, I get a lot of people asking about the type of rabbit wire I use, and I use uh, stainless steel wire. This here is in a a pound spool and this one here you see is a uh, 22 gauge and this one here now is from Backwoods Accessories there's just different makers of stainless steel wire and most times I just buy you know whatever is available so this one here is a uh, 22 gauge but uh, this one here is also from Backwoods Accessories this one here is in 20 foot coil and uh, this one here is 21 gauge so that's what I normally use 21 22 gauge stainless steel wire and uh, I know that in some places you're you're not allowed to use stainless steel wire, and I know, uh, for example, on Newfoundland Island you can't because uh, I think the main reason there is because uh, uh, their Merton population is low, they're endangered, and you know when you get a, a population that's endangered, every the survival of every animal counts, I guess, and and with these snares, you know, you you get a Merton in this stainless steel wire, more than likely he's going to end up killing the Merton. So I think on Newfoundland Island they use like modified snares. I don't think they use stainless steel, but they use like brass wire or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I know one fellow that I know that has like I think in brass wire and then a uh, small like a snare and then he has an eye in the wire and then he has a piece of string tied on. And if you get a rabbit that's strong enough to uh, hold rabbit, kill the rabbit, but uh, if you got a non-target animal like a merton or something, then He's strong enough to be able to break it free and, and go clear, you know. So uh, here in Labrador, you know, we don't have that problem. We got a lot of Merton here. If we did accidentally catch one in a rabbit snare, uh, it doesn't make a big lot of difference. We'll just uh, skin it out and uh, sell them with the rest of the fur. Or, or if you don't have a trapper's license, you give them to someone with a license or something like that. But with that being said, I have never ever caught a Merton in a rabbit snare. But I do know what happens because I seen old man get one years ago when I was a young fella going around with him when he was checking his snares. So. And also, like uh, I guess here in Labrador, you know, uh, we're smaller population, spread out more. Like you know, your your rabbit near in the wilderness, so there's no uh, like for pets and stuff. I have never heard tell of anyone getting a cat or anything in a snare like that. Probably happens in more populated areas, so that could be another reason why you wouldn't use stainless steel wire. But but uh, like I said, we don't have those problems here, uh, and so we use stainless steel wire, and it's great wire because. Uh, uh, you know, you can catch quite a few rabbits on one snare most times. Uh, so, with that being said, I think I'm going to move on to the to the next set. Well, now you get this set. I uh, only got one more snare left to check. Just put it up in the air there like that so it'll be easier to see later. And I'll just, I'm going to do a little demo, I guess. Uh, this one here, this is the, the 22 gauge stainless steel wire. If you was out and never had, like, sometimes I just use uh, fingernail clippers or toenail clippers to, to snip me wire, you know. Or, but if you was out and never had nothing to cut your wire with, 
First you put like a little eye there and then figure out how much where you needs. A bit tie out and then just put a, a kink. See that little kink there, right there? Now, I've done it before, busted with my hands, but you can cut your hand. You know, you wind around a little bit and give it a pluck. You could actually cut your hand with these wires. So, I advise, you know, to put a pair of gloves on or wrap it around a couple of sticks, but just a little kink there like that, and, and you could easily break that wire if you had to, you know? And that's why uh, when you're rabbit snaring, if you see a kink in your wire, well that's it, don't use it no more. And the rabbit make a couple of plucks like that and he'll go clear. But if you just wrap that around without that kink, you'll, you'll cut your finger off before you, before you bust it, you know? So, so anyway, a little tip there for you. If you're out in the boot and I need to cut your wire, there you have it. You know, I'm not sitting snares a day, so I'm going to wind this one up. And I just put, put my hand through there like that. Just wind it around and just wind around there. Like that. And that's how I carry my snares with me. Yeah, uh, all different ways of doing it, but that's what I do ahead of time normally. And uh, but I just showed that you know, just in case if you you know you're stuck and got uh, nothing to cut your wire with, it's uh, an option anyway. Uh, so anyway, I got one more snare to check, and uh, I'm hoping to get two actually because. Uh, if I do, it would be supper for tomorrow. Hardly enough with just one. I get uh, probably out of pramican wood or something like that. So. so anyway, I was just getting a few rabs. I was pretty much eating them up. You know, as we was getting them two and three to a time like that. Uh, give a couple away as well. So but anyway, one more snare to check. Well, I didn't get near rabbit there, but he was certainly here. Fresh tracks, but there was some blood on the tree. Look, he was sniffing, scra scratching at that, and then now I knew it around there. You know, I had quite a few people asking me rabbit wire, tip rabbit wire I use, and stuff like that. So I said, oh, I'll make a little video for now, and later on I'll do a real good uh, uh, rabbit snaring video. Uh, tomorrow I'll be taking up a few traps, and it all depends what when the weather's like Wednesday and Thursday, I guess. So, so I guess that's it for this one, though. Uh, like always, uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you all in the next one.